Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about using a flag. Uh, I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York. I make videos like this about technique, about philosophy. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go ahead and subscribe. So I got a question. I've been asking people to send me questions during this period. I'm trying to make a video every day. Uh, I am working from my home, so we're going to do what we can here. Um, but uh, they want to, you know, said, can you explain flagging? So I think I'll show it. It might be easier to show it. And I do have some gear so I can make it happen. So essentially, I've got my Nikon here. Um, the Z6, that's going to be my video camera, and I'm going to film this scene, which is uh, basically just uh, kind of a medium close-up of Uncle Leo. So Uncle Leo is chilling, and I've got two lights here. These are Felix LEDs. They're dual color, so I made one of them, this one, uh, 5600 Kelvin, which is the setting of the camera, and I made the other one 3000 Kelvin, so we can see the different lights, right? It'd be easier. And what we're going to do is we're going to light up the plan is to light Uncle Leo with the proper color and then use the warm color as to light the background. So if I were to just fire up this light, what we can see is, you know, he's lit. The background, I mean, it does fade, you know, because it's like, uh, you can see it's not perfectly even. But basically, if I just point the light at him, we have basically got, uh, you know, a background that is lit. And we don't want the background to be lit, right? We want the background to be a different color. So, um, I mean, there's a few things you can do. I, you saw what I just did that. That was called feathering. If I wanted the opposite, right, I could turn it that way. Now I'm getting light off of him and the wall's more evenly lit. I could also turn the light away from the wall, which also can work, you know. But you see the wall is still being lit, and look at how the light on him is now really not, not working for what we want to do. You know, we're assuming in this scenario that we can't really move our lights, so I'm going to basically point it at him to get what I consider to be the nicest uh, expression of light on him which I think is like right there. And by doing that, again, we have some light on the background still. Now, the most basic kind of flagging um, with these kind of lights is what's called, you know, a barn door. Oh, well, you guys can see this. I mean, kind of, I had to move us up out of the light so you guys could see. So a barn door goes in the front of your light and, you know, you can get two, two uh, or four uh, leafs, as it would be. And these will allow you to basically flag the light. So let's try that first. So I put the barn door on here. Slide that guy on. Perfect. All right, so let's go back to where we were. I'm just looking at the back of the camera to line it up. So I got that nice light. So I take the, the leaf over here of my barn door and I move it over. And again, we can see that it is actually doing a pretty decent job, right? So in this case, I mean, we could almost get away with just using the barn door. But you can see it's not perfect. There's still a very slight edge. And the reason why I stopped there, even though I can go further, is I'm starting to hit his hair. You see, it's starting to hit, it's starting to affect uh, Uncle Leo right there. It hits his hair. If I want to get it off the background altogether like that, now again, I'm flagging it off his hair, which I don't want to do in this case. So, you you know, it depends on your situation. So let's skip the barn door for a second and let's talk about using a flag. Now, generally a flag is basically just something you put between uh, the light and the subject. And it is generally or always <laughs> black. They're usually made out of duvetine. Um, I mean, anything you put that blocks the light is technically flagging the light. Uh, but generally they're duvetine, they're black, they come in different sizes. Uh, I don't have proper flags here at my house. So, well, I have a French flag, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so I'm actually gonna use this piece of white board, which is not the thing you wanna use. I mean, it's white. Why don't we wanna use white? The reason why you don't wanna use white is because the white board's also gonna bounce light around and we wanna have control, that's why we light. So generally speaking, you don't wanna use white, but that's what I got, so that's what we're gonna use. So there's a few things to take in consideration. When you're using a flag that's separate from your light, Basically, if you take the, the flag and you put it close to your light, if you look at the shadow edge, right, it's kind of soft and diffuse, right? You can see the edge of the, the light back there is kind of soft, right? If I move my flag closer to the wall or to the, to the, you know, to the background, uh, it becomes a harder line. So that can come into play for some things that you're doing. Uh, but of course, if I put it here, right, and trying to block the background, I mean, I might be able to pull it off. Yeah, not bad, right? I'm able to kind of do it. I am getting a little bit of his hair. No, not really. Um, so yeah, I could put it back here. To me, the shadow edge is not super important because uh, you're not gonna see it. I'm going off the side. So I don't care about that and I'll, it'll be easier for me to block what I want by putting it closer, I think. So I'm gonna move the flag in closer to basically get, get it to get the background nice and dark. So I'm basically going to move it in, you know, and you can kind of just position it. The goal here is to block as much light as possible without blocking it off his hair if we can get it. So I'm going to find the spot and you can actually see too, this is an advantage off the, over the barn door. I'm like leaning it forward, leaning it back. So, 
you know, I'm able to kind of move it around to get it where I want it. Okay, so let's do this. Oh, also I should mention before we get this in place, size is important, right? Especially in this case, because if I use something small, like here's my, my what, I, what you might call a French flag. This is by Lowell. Um, these are great, actually. Uh, they You can buy these little arms for them. And lots of the Lowell lights have places where the arms attach, or you can buy this attachment here that you can mount it on things. I'm not gonna mount it for, for this purpose, but um, basically this is black, which is good, right? Um, but it's also kind of small, right? So if you notice, if I put it close to my light, right, I'm not, it's not a problem, right? I can do it. But if I did want to put it further back, you can see, depending on my scene, right, I might not be able to cover everything I want. So size does matter with these. That's why they make different size flags. So, all right, so let's do this. So I'm going to do a combination here. I'm going to actually close the barn door a bit and I'm going to bring the flag in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use, because I don't have proper tools, I'm just going to use this clamp here just to kind of uh, give me a place to put it so it stays up. Normally you put a flag like on a C-stand or something. And I'm just going to go like this. Um, you, want, you know, you want to know what's in the frame, so I'm just going to stand behind the camera. Now there is some light on the wall back there because I have lights on in the room, um, but my light is not. Uh, you see how it didn't change there? My light's not on the wall now. That's just natural light in the space. I don't think I can really get rid of that because I have this light maxed out and I'm uh, and I'm as close as I can be with, in our scenario. So that looks pretty good. All the lights off the wall. Uh, what I'll do is I'll turn all the lights off in here in the space once we get everything set. Although actually I probably should do it now. So let me actually do this and see if we can, I mean, there's a window right there, so probably not gonna be completely dark, but let's see. Yeah, it looks a little better. Of course, now I'm probably totally in silhouette to you guys, but you can see that. Oh no, I'm not actually, you can see me. Uh, all right, good. So that looks pretty good. So great, now we're done, right? So we turn on our background light to get the background blue, or warm rather, and now what do we just do? We hit our subject with light. Now, that's not what we want, right? In this case, what we want is to only hit the background. So again, I'll go through the same procedure. I'm gonna take my barn door, and I'm gonna close it to get the light off the subject. And, right, that's good, right? No, it's not good. Why isn't it good? Because the background's not lit evenly, right? So well, in the other case, we might've got away with the barn door. This one, we, really, we can't, you know? We need to make sure that our background is fully lit. So I need to make, this is as far closed as I can put the barn door. I mean, it's not gonna be completely even, clearly, because the light's coming from one side, but. So here's where we really have to use a flag. This is why the flag is important. And again, depending on where you put the flag, now maybe the shadow edge is important, because if I can see the edge, of it, I can feather it, and I can also move it closer to my subject, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing here. Yeah, there we go. Get it off that background by moving it closer. Get all the light off the subject, but keep all the light on the background. I probably should put this on a stand so you can see it better, but I'll actually probably put it on the ground. You see it's on the edge of his hair there. We don't want that. I'm going to move it in and something like that. And that's pretty good. I think I'm gonna have to also use the barn door a tiny bit. To pull this off correctly. Let's see if we can get this in here. A lot of times on a film set, you'll have a monitor, so you can actually, you know, that I can see from the other direction. So we are kind of working it like this. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go here, that's gonna be our best bet. Like this. And that right there is pretty good. Again, it's not gonna to be totally even back there because um, the light's on one side, but you can see that the two lights are not touching anymore, right? I can, right, if I do that. And actually we can turn off our key light. And I can just flag this so we can just get the background lit, which is the other way to do it. This is nice because then I can actually see, you can see it's tiny, tiny, touching him a tiny bit, but not too bad. So we would mess with that. I mean, his hair is kind of crazy. But yeah, I mean, that's basically how it works. I really think this is a good idea for a video, so I'll probably do this again once I get back in the studio and all this is over. I'll get some other flags to kind of show you like on a full-size person while you'd use different size ones. 
In this case here with the, uh, with the hair uh, in the background, what I would have ended up doing in a proper set is I would have used a large flag to block most of the light. And then I would have used a smaller one, like a little thing to kind of come in and just get that little bit if it was touching his hair, you know, if it was gonna, if it was really gonna be a thing. So you actually end up using a lot of times, that's why I have multiple sizes. You just use small ones and large ones to create these like, you know, you might do something like this. Let's see if you guys can see this one. Like, let's say this is my flag. I might build something like this, you know, where it's like the two pieces together in order to create uh, the exact flag that you need. So that's basically how you would do it um, on a larger set. But remember that there's a few factors that matter when you're flagging stuff. One is the distance of the flag to the light source versus, you know, what you're trying to flag off. Oh, and also the size of the flag. Both those things really play a major part. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. If you have any other uh, things you guys want me to talk about, well, some things I can talk about, some things I can show, um, go ahead and let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to post every single day, keep things going. We're getting some people on to talk to, um, and I think you guys are enjoying that. If it's something that you want to see, please let me know. I will do the best I can to do it. So uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.